All right, welcome back to part two. Uh, this is a video where we are uh, going to work on our, our previous network here that was looking at some noisy sensor data that's being simulated by this slider. Um, and we've, we've come up with three different smoothing algorithms here, and one of them is not even that uh, smoothing algorithms. It's just straight, straight on through. But uh, we're looking at seeing when this, this slider uh, is within the bounds of this rectangle, right? And you can think about this as if, you know, maybe you're using an accelerometer on an Arduino and you're looking for uh, when it's rotating to a certain angle or if you're on a, using a distance sensor when somebody gets uh, to a certain distance um, uh, to that sensor. And generally, this, these types of inputs are a little noisy, right? They're not always reading consistently or smoothly. So we're trying to work out different methods of, of how to know when things are, are uh, entering triggerable zones or how to smooth things out. And in the last video, what we covered was uh, these two methods here uh, specifically, which was lag, using a lag chop, and then this trail analyze uh, you know, double combo here. Um, and what this is giving us is this, this error towards the end, right? And you can see this accumulated error of um, you know the over four seconds of like how badly these smoothing algorithms are doing, right? And um, you know when when you're in the middle, the error is not so bad. Like most of them get it when you're right in the middle of that that trigger zone. Uh, but where this starts to fall apart a little bit for a lot of them is when you put them on an edge case, and especially raw the error climbs pretty significantly up to about 30%. Uh, lagged and moving average do um, pretty similarly with moving average sometimes just beating out lagged uh, by, uh, by a, a margin. So what we, what we want to do in this video is figure out how to make these algorithms certain of themselves. We want to give them a metric to know how, how error prone am I right now? Um, how, how, much of a, how, how much of an error am I, I potentially generating uh, for everything down, down the line? And then adding a threshold to that, that um, you know, certainty uh, in order to determine whether or not we really think that this slider is within this triggerable zone. And the, the, the first way to do this, uh, we're actually just going to borrow from what we currently have down here. So uh, we're just going to take this lagged uh, method that we came up with in the previous video, and we're going to add some stuff to it. And I'm going to separate this a little higher just so we have a difference. Um, but we're going to use the same setup that we had with this lag. Uh, the lag uh, has a window of 0.4, 0.4. And then the logic has the bounds already already written in there. Um, so uh, what we're going to start with is taking this logic and mapping it to some different values. And in order to do that, we're just going to use this math. And then we're going to range this math. Uh, fr the from range is going to be from 0 to 1. We want 0 to actually be ranged down to negative 1. So whenever you know, we hit a zero, this math is now going to output a negative one. And whenever we hit a one, it's going to output a one. Right? And then we're going to attach this to a uh, speed chop. Right? And the speed chop, what we're going to do is uh, limit by clamping it between zero and one. So now uh, what we've essentially done here is given this thing uh, a way to build up certainty that it is a is uh, one or the other, right? So when this uh, when this logic is giving out these erroneous messages, where hey, I think because of noise, I'm I'm outside instead of inside where it should be, right? Right now we should be reading this thing as inside the triggerable bounds. Um, we kind of smooth over those with this this certainty metric, right? You can see as we get you know false uh, false data here that this this speed is kind of going down to about 0.8 right so how can we use this well if this is certainty then we can create a threshold on certainty we can create a threshold of 
how certain are we that we are in inside the bounds versus outside the bounds and we can do this with another logic so if we place down this logic and then use the convert input uh, to be off when outside bounds and then give it bounds of 0 to let's say 0.5 right we've just created a, a threshold where when this thing is outside of the bounds the speed decreases and then we get the 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 uh, speed goes within these bounds within this certainty threshold of 0 to 0.5 and this this uh, computes a one, but we we don't want that. We want this to actually be a little flipped. So we're going to take the channel pre-op and invert it. So whenever we're inside the bounds, we're off because we're not as certain as we should be that we are actually within those bounds. And then when we're within those bounds, it turns on. And what this is giving you is a very smooth uh, way of approaching this problem, right? So if we were to put this on an edge case where um, you know, it might trigger the lagged or the uh, moving average, this, this uh, speed uh, and logic combo up here, this certainty metric, uh, tends to give you more consistent results. Uh, but again, consistency, uh, in order to get better consistency, you're sacrificing response time. Right, because now we have to build up this certainty metric to a certain spot in order to get it to actually fire, right? Um, but uh, you know, that's just one of those trade-offs you have to balance when you're when you're making this thing. So I'm going to give this uh, a name again. I'm just going to reorder some of this stuff around, and I'm going to give this a different name, uh, and we'll call this uh, lagged. Uh, accumulator or I guess uh, yeah we'll call it lagged accumulator that works and then we'll, we'll add this into our merge and we can start to look at um, you know the error that we're getting from the lagged accumulator and what you'll see here is as the uh, as the knob goes in we get a bit of error while that certainty is building and then it goes out, right? So again, this is error based on the response time of the accumulator, um, and uh, that's that's what we're getting here. Um, and the the wider the uh, the error, right? The wider that this thing moves, the more error we're going to get. But the interesting bit is that these edge cases no longer produce as much error as the uh, the other methods, right? So we're getting we're getting a much more consistent data stream in. So if we were to take this to some value where we're getting, uh, let's see if I can find it. Uh, if we're getting like a little bit of or more error out of the the lagged and, and moving average. Yeah, like here, right? You see that our lagged accumulator isn't getting as much error from that. And, you know, this, this block here, this, this math speed and logic block can be applied to the same thing. It can be applied to this, um, this analyze as well. So if we take copy and paste and, and throw it up here, and then this math, speed, and logic. I'm going to take the same thing and connect it in with those. And then add a rename as well. And we'll call this one, uh, you know, the moving, moving average accumulator. And then add this thing into our merge block as well. You can start to see, uh, you know, we have we have a, a pretty, uh, you know, we our our library of smoothing and our library of of tracking these things is is growing, right? 
The moving average accumulator uh, is, is giving us a bit more error than the lagged accumulator. But you know, again, you're getting, uh, oh, actually, that's because it's not hooked up correctly. That would help, right? So maybe we do this and it helps our case. Great. Okay, so uh, let's see. Let's see how this is doing. So both the lagged accumulator and the moving average accumulator are uh, getting uh, you know, pretty close to zero error in reading this edge case. However, again, their error comes in the form of this response. So because it takes time to you know, bring the speed up or bring the speed down, they, they start to uh, have this, uh, this error build. And you know, this error, you can, you can start to reduce this response rate uh, just by changing your certainty threshold, right? Right now, you have to be 50% certain that you're in a spot before you trigger, right? So we can lower this certainty threshold to let's say 0.25 and maybe get some better response rate out of this, right? So we know that we're at zero. Yeah, so that's that's giving us a little bit better error than uh, before. Before we were going up to like tw 20, and you can kind of see that when we exit. Uh, but when we enter, we only get uh, a response time of one. So this is this is a way to kind of preload whether or not the um, you know, you're more focused on the entry or the exit response time, right? So as we enter, we have less error than as we exit, which will have more error. And that's because the speed builds up, right? It builds all the way up to one, and then it has to come back from one in order to hit this 0.25 to trigger the, the exit, right? So we can do the same thing if we go above 0.5, right? And we can make the uh, the entrance lagged, and the exit be you know have a little uh, only a, a tiny bit of error, right? While we still maintain that consistency of the edge case. Cool. So uh, the last thing that I want to talk about, uh, actually, uh, I guess it's going to have to wait for the next video because this one's already at 13 minutes. So this is going a little longer than I wanted it to. Uh, so I guess we'll break this up into one more video where we'll talk about how to use weights to create a, uh, another type of smoothing algorithm. So we'll catch you in that video.